Hi, I'm James Vanderbeek, and I've been acting for over 57 years. I'm going to tell you about a few of the projects that I've been in over the years in a segment called Let's Take a Vanderpeek. Really? Vanderpeek. That's, the, that's what we want to go with? Vanderpeek. All right, let's take a Vanderpeek. As the world turns, I, uh, <laughs> I got a job to do two days on As the World Turns when I was 17 and I worked two 14 hour days and I made $800 and then the union rep from AFTRA caught up with me and said I had to join AFTRA which cost me $834 so I had a net loss of 34 bucks for two days of work on As the World Turns you should be thanking me. I mean, this is the chance you've wanted your whole life, right? Angus was my first major feature film. My first feature film ever. <laughs> and it was a big studio movie. And I was like the bully. I think I was like number three in the call sheet. And I'd never been in a film set before. And then everybody told me, be prepared. Your life is going to change when this comes out. And I was like, great. I'm ready for my life to change. And the movie came out and did no business at all, and nothing changed. I was still going to the same auditions, knocking on the same doors. Coach, is a minute and a half left. Let me throw something. I ain't interested in another turnover. Get out there. Varsity Blues was such a crazy time of my life. It was my first big lead of a studio movie. John Boyd does is missing that chip in his brain that the rest of us have that makes us think, I wonder what other people are going to think about this. The scene, they're putting the needle in Wendell's knee, and I'm in the doorway, and I'm talking to him, and I'm making this speech, and it's starting to sound a little bit like a speech. John looks at me, walks up, and starts to shut the door in my face, like in the middle of the speech. And I'm like, so I bang the door open with it with my arm, and I get through the rest of the speech, but at that point, he turned around and goes, it's good to do that. Just to see that like, not only could John do what he does and accomplish what he needs to do on set, but he's also looking out for everybody and assisting everybody else and like, just setting it up so that other people can spike it down. I remember thinking, that's the kind of actor I want to be one day. I really did try to kill myself. Rules of Attraction was a really wild set. Remember the, like the second or third day of shooting was when we did that split screen shot. And it's me on one side of the screen and Shannon Sossman on the other. In order to get this, the two shots to blend together, we had a camera that was on a motion uh, track and it was timed so that a minute and 34 seconds after action, it would turn like that. And so we had to time the entire scene and it was a really ballsy move to have like the whole relationship kind of dependent on that shot and it totally worked. DiCaprio died in Titanic. That is go, baby, go! One Tree Hill came at what I might describe as a quiet time in my career. Um, and I got this offer to go back to Wilmington, North Carolina, where we actually shot Dawson's Creek. And um, at first I was like, I don't know. And then I thought, you know, I really want to go back there. That would be a lot of fun. So I did. And then I ended up doing like four episodes. You don't see it? See what? Look a little to the left. Don't trust the bee in apartment 23. That was fun. I, uh, I got offered that because I had parodied myself in some funnier dive videos. Uh, I said to Anoshka Khan, who created the show, you can't, I'll do the, there's only one rule I have. You can't ever be afraid of insulting me. I pitched this storyline where I go on the fake Dancing with the Stars, and I asked for a really inappropriately low V-neck, so it came down about here, and it's like, oh, that's sparkly stars on it. I'm about to go on, I'm thinking this is gonna be really funny, but then it also occurred to me, because we just had my son, Google is a thing. I'm really hoping this image is buried pretty deep in the Google search. <laughs> Yo, where's the coffee at? Oh, shit. <laughs> what would Diplo do? When you think James Vanderbeek, you obviously think DJ, which is what Brandon Dermer actually thought. Brandon Dermer was asked to make a commercial for the Mad Decent Block Party, which is Diplo's tour. He thought, what if James played Diplo instead of Wes, who actually is Diplo? My son came to us and said, we think this is a series. And I said, it's not a series, guys. This is just a one-off idea. There's no way to sustain it. And then I very quickly realized that I was wrong to the point where I said, I think I can write this. 
let me write it, let me run it, I'll star in it, we can go make it. And Vice Sand was like, well, yeah, duh. Watch What Would Diplo Do, airing Thursdays at 10 p.m. on Viceland.